Okay, so today we need to talk about periodic table and those decimal numbers on there. Remember the decimal numbers were the at natural average of all the naturally occurring isotopes. And the reason why it's what was a decimal is because it's an average. Well, we're gonna be using those average numbers. Okay, so I wanna talk about units. Every industry has a common unit based on their um, product uh, size, cost, that kind of thing. So we're going to, as a class, create some units here. So if you were going to buy a car, what do you think the unit is? Dollars? What about numbers? No, numbers numbers of cars. What do you think? Yeah. How many cars do you buy at a time? One. So the unit is each. <laughs> okay? Because it's expensive, it's big, and it's just, you don't buy normally, unless you're a dealer, that doesn't count. But I mean, just, just plain consumers. Okay. So. That would be a car. Okay? What if we bought... Um, eggs, dozen, and how many are in a dozen? 12. And what if we bought um, paper? Huh? Sheets and rolls. When you buy a pack of copy paper, how many are in it? 500, and what's that called? A ream, exactly. Now, now we talk chemistry, physics, engineering. Now I want you to notice something in this series. Cars are big, expensive. Eggs are smaller, less expensive. Papers, smaller. Atoms, a lot smaller. There's a trend, big to small. Small to big. Okay. So if this trend continues, the atom is super small compared to these. What do you think this number here is going to be? Really big. And I'm saying really, really big. And let me show you how big it is. Six point oh two times ten to the twenty third. That is a six with 21 zeros after it. Big number. And the name of that number is a mole. So that's where the word mole comes from. It's talking about the convenient unit we use in chemistry, physics, and engineering. Uh, and also in, in the last 20 or 30 years or so, we've been using it a lot in biology as well in terms of molecular biology. Uh, biochemists use it as well. Um, okay, so we're, use, we're working in moles now. So the guy that discovered that number, his name is Avogadro. So they call him Avogadro's number, 602 times 10 to the 23rd. Okay, so let's see, let's do this. Let's look at helium. Helium's got the decimal number is 4.00. Okay, if we took We took, we took 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of helium, it would weigh 
4.00 grams. We took, we took one mole of atoms of helium, it would weigh 4.00 grams. So we have grams per mole. For helium. That's a conversion factor. As you remember from unit one, conversion factors always have an inverse. So that means we have that one as well. And these are called the molar mass. Now, in your textbook, if you're reading that chapter, it'll also say atomic mass. Atomic mass is if you're working with just one atom. Molar mass is working with a molecule. Frequently, it depends on what text you're looking at or what instructor, they'll say molar mass for everything even if it's just one atom. But, but technically, if it's just one atom, it's called the atomic mass. So the atomic mass of helium is 4.00. And again, a lot of people say, that's the molar mass, same thing. What's nice about calling it the molar mass, it's got the word mole built into it. Now the word, the unit name mole came, comes from molecule. Okay. So we've got some conversion factors here again. This is like unit one. One conversion factor is that. Another conversion factor is Six point oh two times ten to the twenty third atoms or molecules per one mole. And there's a third one. We talk about a mole of gas. which is 22.4 liters per mole. Now, the thing about gases, as you probably already know, they're very compressible, very compressible. And the reason for that is the distance between the atoms or molecules is far apart. So they have a lot of distance where they can move around. So you have to specify when you talk about liters of a gas, now I'm talking about any gas now, doesn't matter whether it's uranium hexafluoride or hydrogen gas. It's 22.4 liters per mole. However, that's at one temperature and one pressure. It's called standard temperature and pressure, STP. So whenever we specify any gas, we have to specify gas. Um, actually, it's um, uh, we always have to specify temperature and it's a special kind of temperature. It's called Kelvin temperature. And we also have to specify the uh, pressure. So. We go at STP. And of course, the, so you have three conversion factors, six conversion factors, because you have the inverse. Now, this is just a number. This is like a dozen. So we can have a mole of chickens. How many chickens will we have? We'd have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. It's like you can have a dozen, dozen atoms just a number. It's just it's convenient in chemistry and physics to use that big number here because the atoms are so small. Okay? So let's look at some practice problems here. Are there any questions about, now you need to know these three conversion factors. Um, one of them you don't have to memorize. 
because this is based on the formula of the, of the molecule. And you'll always have a periodic table, so just look it up. Um, this one you need to know. This one you need to know. And this is for any molecule. There's 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. This is for any gas. So any, any specific, specific, okay? So when you're trying to find the molar mass, you have to know the formula. All right, so let's look at some practice problems here. And by the way, I have a ton of practice sheets um, on files. In fact, let me just show you where they are. Oh. So we go to files, unit four. We're going to learn about what that word means, stoichiometry, in a little while. Here are all the worksheets. That's where you found the equation balancing substitute. And then we have the, where are they? Oh. Um, I'm going to um, end up having putting a few more worksheets in here. Um, I want the worksheets um, for what we're doing in a lecture today. I have, I have zillion stoichiometry work, um, worksheets here. Lots of equation balancing. Um, okay, well, I will do that today. Okay, so let's go back to this here. Okay, how many grams of water are in 3.4 mole? Now, this is a unit cancellation. This is like unit one. So we have what's given, what we're trying to calculate, and the setup. So that, let's just put that right over here. Okay, so um, step number one is balance the equation. Do we have a chemical reaction going on here? Nope, so we skip one. What's given? 3.4 mole, right. And what are we trying to calculate? Grams. So do we have a conversion factor that has moles and grams in it? Molar mass, right? And remember, from day one, given's always got to cancel. So moles are got to be in the bottom. Grams on top. Now, where do we get the grams per mole for water? In the periodic table. So what's the formula for water? It's a tough one now. So how many hydrogens do we need? Two, and how many oxygens? One, so oxygen is 16. 
hydrogen is 101, and we have two of them. So they're 18.02 grams per one mole of water. And that's it. Moles cancel, leaves us with grams, trying to calculate grams. So we have two sig figs, four sig figs, two sig figs in the answer. Okay, so no more miles per hour conversions and all that stuff. Now we're working with chemicals. All right, any questions about that? Okay, that's a really straightforward problem. And we could invert it. We could say, how many moles are in 45.6 grams? Okay, so what's given is 45.6 grams. We're trying to calculate moles. So, grams need to cancel, moles on top, and for water, this is for water, so that's 18.02. And so that's okay. So three sig figs, four sig figs, three sig figs. Now those are both one step problems. Um, as from unit one, remember we can have multi-step problems as well. Same here. And eventually at the end of this unit, what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be taking a reaction, something like 15 grams of water is, is um, converted to uh, how many grams of hydrogen and oxygen. That's a stoichiometry problem. So that's where we get into first step, this balance equation. So that's why, so we're gonna put this today together with balancing equations. And that's the stoichiometry part. Okay, so let's try some more here. Let's stick with water since we've already calculated the molar mass of water. All right, how many molecules of water are in 2.34 moles of water? So we have given 2.34. We're trying to calculate number of molecules. Okay, do we have a conversion factor for moles and number of molecules? Remember that one? Yeah, it's Avogadro's number, this one over here on the left. Here, that one there.
So moles are going to cancel. Okay, so we're looking at 234. So whenever you see how many, I want you to think Avogadro's number. How many atoms, how many molecules, how many of anything in chemistry, Avogadro's number, okay? And don't forget, we're gonna be using the EE function We have three sig figs, three sig figs. Answer is going to be three sig figs. Okay, are there any questions about that one? So whenever you're talking about, and we could reverse that saying that we had 5.6 times 10 to the 26 molecules of water, how many moles is that? Just a flip, yeah. Yep, times 10 to the 24. Because when you multiply 2.34 times 602 times 10 to the, this is 23 equals that in the calculator. Does your calculator have an EE on it? Yeah, it says it does. Yeah, so you, you go 602 EE 23. Ooh. Okay, so let's go on and do some more examples here. Okay, how many molecules of water are in 23.4 grams of water? Okay, so given is 23.4 grams. I'm gonna calculate number of molecules. Okay, so remember what I said, whenever you're saying how many of something, think Avogadro's number. So what's Avogadro's number? Six oh right, six point oh two times ten to the twenty-third molecules per mole. Per mole. Not gram per mole. So what's the first thing we need to do then? Grams to moles, and then moles to Avogadro's number. So it's kind of a deal in chemistry. The rest of your career in chemistry, if in doubt, convert to moles. Because everything is related to moles. There's heat capacity, so many calories per mole. There's um, uh, expansion capacities. There's uh, uh, colligative properties and so many degrees per mole. Always per mole. So if in doubt, convert to moles. So grams to moles and moles the number of uh, molecules. Okay, and we're working with water, so that's 1802. Our next conversion is going to be moles in the bottom here, so they cancel 602 times 10 to the 23rd. Okay, so everything cancels except what we're trying to calculate.
So in 23.4 grams of water, we're going to end up with 7.82 times 10 to the 23rd molecules. Okay, this is just like unit one. Just like unit one. This is a two-step problem. And intermediate of moles. Okay, any questions about this one? Okay, this is slightly different again. How many hydrogen atoms? Remember, water is H2O, so there's two hydrogens in there. How many hydrogen atoms are in 12.5 grams of water? Okay, so we have given it's 12.5 grams of water. So if if again, everything's related to moles, so let's convert to moles. Okay, so this gets us to moles. What's the next step? First of all, moles have got to cancel. So moles are going to be in the bottom for sure. What's on the top up there? Huh? Avogadro's number. Good. Now, because we use the molar mass of water, H2O, that's 18.02, we have to say that that's molecules of water. That's not what I want you to know. I want to know how many atoms are in there. So what's our next step? Okay, and before you answer that, let me just give you a simple, well, theoretically simple. Um, if I have 10 bicycles, how many wheels are on a bicycle? Two, right? So how many wheels, if I took those 10 bicycles apart, am I going to have? 20. How'd you get that? <laughs> uh, 10 times 2. So that's the conversion factor. Two wheels per bicycle. That's the conversion factor we're going to use. So how many atoms... How many hydrogens are in water? Two. We're going to have a conversion factor. Two atoms, hydrogen, or one molecule of water. Just like with the bicycles, two to one. Okay, because you have to have that third conversion to get it from molecules to atoms. Just like when we did the bicycles to wheels conversion. Okay. So that's the setup. And remember, 90% of the credit is right there. No need to use your calculator. I had a student, one, one student in my, since I've been teaching uh, community college, I've been uh, teaching community college for 16 years. I had one student. Now, I've been up in Washington, they're in the quarter system. So that's four quarters a year. So I've taught a lot of classes. One guy was older than me. <laughs> I'm old. I'm 74. So, you know, I don't have very many students older than me. This guy refused to use a calculator. So he did everything longhand. Long division. 
even did a square root longhand. And that's a real pain to do longhand. Yeah, the guy did everything. And he, he got an A in the class. So he always sat in the back. He never asked a question. <laughs> I, I even, theoretically, I, st I, I took his, I copied his test because I wanted, it was so cool. And then um, I kept it at home in one of my files. I, but I kept it, it was so cool. <laughs> Yeah, he refused. In fact, there was a sci-fi sci story I was reading about, um, you know, say 100 years or, and these kids were formed a secret society and they were doing math problems by hand. It was a big deal. Because everyone, of course, you know, like, let's do a long division. You know, could you do long division? Probably not. I mean, I have to, I'd have to think about it to do it. You know, it's not something, um, unless that's in, in the new Common Core <laughs> curriculum. The long division? Oh, cool. Long division. When I taught high school, I taught a lot of algebra. I never taught <laughs> long division in algebra. Huh. Anyway, it was, it was kind of a cool little story. Okay, so let's grind this guy out. Question isn't asking anything about oxygen. Just wants to know. 12.5 grams, wouldn't that include the hydrogen and the oxygen? Right, that's right. Exactly. That's why we use the 1802, because that included the oxygen and two hydrogens. Okay. My, I guess where I'm lost is you'd be dividing it by only the weight of the hydrogen, wouldn't you? At the very end, and then you'd... No, the, there's no weight involved in the end. It's just counting. Okay. It's just like with a bicycle. Yeah. You don't care about how much the wheel weighs. You just want to know how many. I guess I'm confused because I see it as like, if it was like a three-wheel bicycle and you have two small and then one big. The one big is the oxygen. You wouldn't really divide it by two then. Well, it depends what you're asking. I asked, um, okay, we have 10 three-wheelers. Three-wheelers, always, at least the old ones had a big front wheel and two little ones, right? If I said, how many, for 10, 10 tricycles, how many little tires do I have? 20, 20 because there's two little tires per yeah. tricycle. Did I ask about the big tires? I guess where I'm confused is you have the total weight of it anyways at the very beginning. Yeah, that's and right. Then, so it'd be like saying like you have 30 wheels, how many are little? And then you're just dividing it by two. Do you know what I mean? That's where I'm confused. I feel like there should still be that that connection of the big one. I think that you're know, talking about the, at the end when we take yeah. it by two. Yeah. So why we just why did we take just H two like the hydrogen we didn't take we didn't calculate the oxygen because it's just one it doesn't make well sense. it's still a conversion factor conversion factor is one oxygen atom per one water molecule it happens to be one to one ratio but you, but if you don't put that in the units don't work out a different example not just the, like something just to make it close to it's just like because i'm confused too with why did we just did two atoms of hydrogen because the question said how many hydrogen so you're, from, you're going from the weight and then you're going to how many actual molecules and then it. exactly gotcha. okay. Okay. okay so that's yeah so so this part here tells us how many molecules of water do we have okay i was still stuck on and, going off of just the weight, and then you're going to try to figure it out. And I'm like, that doesn't equal. <laughs> yeah, remember, if in doubt, convert to moles. And then from moles, we can get number of molecules. But because we used 1802 grams, we're, we're calculating the number of molecules. And then we have molecules. Now we can, the number of molecules. Now we can figure out how many um, hydrogens or oxygens. You will have one of these on the test, just FYI. I'm going to put um, practice tests up also for, for unit four. Okay, so let's do this here.
Okay, so yeah. What's the sig figs for um, the two atoms of hydrogen per one molecule of water? Hmm? <laughs> okay, I've heard two, three, and four. <laughs> None of those are right. <laughs> Infinity. Infinity, or undefined, yes. Because it's exactly two to one. You know, by definition, we're talking about water, it's exactly two hydrogen and one. Yeah. Okay. So infinity. So that those Now, this is probably the trickiest problem um, you're going to run into in this unit. Well, I shouldn't say that. Um, there's two kinds of stoichiometry. There's simple and limiting reactant. Limiting reactant problems are page long. Of all. So we're going to have an extra credit problem of that, which is to be take home or unit four. Uh, so this is almost as tricky as that. Okay. Um, all right. Are we okay with this problem? Any questions about this? Okay. So let's do some other examples. Okay, how many liters of water vapor, water vapor is gaseous water or steam, um, at STP? Okay, so given. We want to know liters. And notice I specified it as TP. So from our three conversion factors that you need to know, yeah. Standard temperature pressure. It's also what oil added. <laughs> you ever watch NASCAR? STP slapped on every car. <laughs> okay. Um, first thing I'm going to do is convert to moles. And G, because it's water, it's 1802. Now we have moles. What's the next conversion factor? 22.4 liters per mole. Right, so moles got to be in the bottom, so it cancels. Yeah, went from grams to liters at STP. I'm sorry? Yes, a lot harder problem. <laughs> um, there's something called the ideal gas law, which, which um, correlates 
pressure, volume, temperature, depending on, if it's not an HTP, you have to use that. I'm gonna to touch upon that or not cover it, I'm not sure. <laughs> Let me see how the time goes. This is extremely important for 1A. And this is a big deal in 1A. Uh, you will have uh, this in solution chemistry, which uses some things very similar to this. Uh, so I'd rather spend more time on the stuff that is a problem in 1A or 2A or 3A than something on gases. You're going to get gases in there. but So anyway, to answer your question, sorry, I get off on tangents easily. Um, yeah, so, so it's not an STP, then, then you have to use this formula in, in lieu of the 22.4. So this would be like a six-step problem. Also, you have to know the parameters. So instead of that staying STP, I'd have to say pressure at a 1.2 atmospheres um, and 300 degrees Kelvin. Okay, and that's what you have to stick in there <laughs> in the, via the ideal gas law. You end up with 43 liters. Now you can also say how many molecules of water vapor, excuse me, let me back up. Um, how many molecules of water vapor are in 34.6 liters of water? Are there any questions about this one? And remember, this doesn't matter if it's water Hydrogen gas, helium gas, uh, oxygen gas, as long as it's a gas, it's 22.4. Okay, so I'm going to do one more. Okay, so on this one, given is 23.5, we want to end up with number of molecules. Now again, number of molecules, that's Avogadro's number. We're starting with liters of gas. So we need to get to moles. We can go from moles then via Avogadro's number, moles to number of molecules. Okay, so we get this way, we're going to get to moles. Now we need to go to by the way, there's an abbreviation for molecules. It's not a very good one though. Okay, when you look at the word molecules, the abbreviation is M O L C. The problem with that is it looks just like the word mole. The C and the E kind of look the same. So 
if you're going to use MLLC, make sure it's a C is a really C looking thing. Do it. When you're doing mole, M O L E, abbreviation for mole is M O L, not much of an abbreviation. You're free to use that as well. Um, I like to spell it out in the beginning. It's a pain, but I like to spell it out. Um, but just when you do the M O L C, make sure that C looks like a C. Okay. Okay, that's what I wanted to cover today is the interrelationship between Rams, molar mass, Avogadro's number, and some practice problems. Now, you have all the wherewithal to do your hydrate lab. So, hydrate back, let me talk about that a little bit. Okay, so basically you took that pretty copper sulfate, hydrate, heated it, and you ended up with the anhydrate, that dull looking stuff only a mother could love, plus the water vapor that escaped. And the ideal is just to find the ratio of the water in the hydrate. So what you're going to do is you're going to take your data and find out the grams of water loss. Convert that to moles of water loss. Now you have a ratio, and then here's the anhydride here. So you're gonna have a ratio of the moles of this to the moles of that, and that's gonna be equal to N. So you find out the mass of your, what stuff that's left over, you subtract out from your original, and that'll give you how much water is lost. Convert that to moles, convert this to moles, the ratio is going to be N. And there's little, um, in your lab, there's a little, uh, like, a, like a data table as you're doing the calculations. But that's the essence of it. That's why you needed to know today's lecture to do it. And those, who already turned in that lab? Yeah, did you already know about grams and moles? Oh, resubmit it. Okay. And don't, and use the same file name. So it just replaces it because I haven't graded anything yet. So for those of you who already turned it in because of that weird due date, is that why you turned it in? <laughs> yeah, because I, I told everyone, I said, don't worry about the due date until we cover it in lecture. So, so it's not a, big, not a big deal. Just resubmit. I did change the due date as well. Okay, so someone else, read, yeah. Well, I, yeah, I told you yesterday. Yeah, same thing. So, all right. Okay. Okay, so there's a request. I'm going to stop this recording and then start another one <laughs> and talk about single replacement. Okay, yesterday was a fun day in lab. <laughs> 